Good morning, folks. We've got the analysis of the powerful storm systems, some incredible science news, and while we deliver an antidote to the insanity surrounding last night's video topic, we will be going over our star at spaceweathernews.com. First off, sun has settled into a quiet period with the active areas lacking developed sunspots, no releasing filaments, and no CMEs. These are the SDO images, the ones some people online say are missing. I checked, they are using the old link, the kids link, and the new one works along with all the others. And also, folks, just NASA's Soho Movie Maker website is down. Soho data itself is fully up as well. This short clip of quiet space weather was downloaded just yesterday morning. Solar wind here. Slight rise in solar wind density and the phi angle dropping towards zero is bringing a small reverberation event in the magnetic field. Not quite at low-level storm conditions, just a minor instability. Meanwhile, we've now had two days without elevated seismicity as we've been between coronal holes. We are going to be connecting to that southern opening the next few hours, and the seismic risk is rising. Peer-reviewed papers on that topic can be found at QuakeWatch.net. Up next, it's Hurricane Florence. After days of model agreement, things are looking a bit squirrely this morning. First, this is GPM's look inside the hurricane just after that wind shear event a few days ago. Now, the Euro and GFS models do agree on landfall, location, and time, but little else. One model has the storm running down the coast while the other swings inland and begins the full drenching about a day earlier. Either way, hope you're ready for it if you're in the impact zone. We also need to mention the super typhoon in the Philippine Sea. Hard to believe this one is wildly more powerful than Florence in the Atlantic. Things are not looking good for those in the pathway here. Positive thoughts and eyes open. We've got the first wind satellite results from the ESA, and its returns have all their scientists and people like me very excited. Take a look at that vertical column action from ground to stratosphere in the polar vortices. While the graphic in total might require a full look to understand, it is indeed wind power at altitude, and the clues about the global electric circuit are beginning to come in. Up next, we're with the ESO, zooming way out into seemingly the middle of nowhere. Their Cosmic Gems collection is a program to utilize otherwise downtime at the facility when science observations aren't ongoing. They will be going for aesthetics as they try to snap the best shots of nearby galaxies. This one is special for EU folks because of the trailing out of dust and gases which should be in all galaxies but aren't well seen or included in our models. Lastly folks, the ESA Wind article came with this and we used it for last night's episode of Deeper Look. Website members at suspiciousobservers.org, you have your 70th episode on the year. We are approaching 400 episodes in total, and it follows up episode 69 as we go over the cells and jets affected by space weather using that solar forcing chart that we've been seeing the last two weeks. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.